Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bullhucker Podcast. I'm Moose Lundstrom. I'm Matty G. And Matt's uh, filling in for the reveal this time. Uh, and we have returning Bullhucker, Todd Allen. Hi. You recognize Todd? <laughs> what up? And it's that kind of high, that's why you got asked to dance. Heidi ho Hi. neighbors. Tarzan's <laughs> back in the building. Mm. Uh, Todd was with us last episode, and I will say, if you have not watched episode 12, you need you probably should. Uh, spoiler you alert. You need to watch uh, To see Todd's three stories, because you're about to find out which one is the bullhucker. Matt and see, I are going to guess. everybody knows me from Owen and Mega Music and being the guy down there, and this is going to shed a whole light on my previous life, <laughs> hey. uh, being a them. traveling musician. <laughs> That's what it's for. Humanize. Uh, once again, if you uh, check us out on thebullhucker.com, you can find out Todd's stuff on episode 12. Get on that page. It'll have all his information, all his contact stuff on there. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can check us out on that. If you do get on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe and hit the bell. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. ding. So it gives you an alert when we post every Wednesday. So uh, anything for you, Matt, before we start? Oh, you want me to plug something? Do you want to plug something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I host a local community podcast called Beat Around the Brush. My most recent episode was focused on veteran suicide awareness and veterans programs. I interviewed uh, Morgan County Veteran Service Officer and Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Brush, uh, Dan Scalisi, and uh, former Chamber Director and recently retired person, Melody Christensen. Um, Ooh, the, I know her. Yeah, she's great. Um, at the beginning that's of the great. podcast, I shared a ton of resources for vets. So if you're a vet who's struggling, uh, call the Veterans Crisis Line, uh, connect with Dan or Melody. Uh, anything we could do to help you, we want to help. So uh, awesome. that's probably the most important thing. And uh, we didn't mention that for episode 12, but I'll put that link in the bottom of this also. Cool. Thank so, you, sir. Much appreciated. So you can uh, check it out. And it's a good podcast. He does a good job as podcast. So nice. it's a lot more organized than this one. I'll let you know right now. So it's way uh, more infrequent releases. Though I, it's <laughs> like you've committed and you're doing very good. I committed to like once a month, and then life hit, and I was like, okay, it's yeah. going to be maybe once every couple months at this yeah. point. But or six, when I get people again. in, and uh, I'll be releasing another episode October first. I interviewed. Uh, our chief of police here in Brush, Derek Boss, um, just to get his perspective on what it means to be a police officer in this crazy era. And if you are in Brush, Colorado, it is a lot of city government. Uh, he's interviewed a lot of people in in the city of Brush, so it's a very it's a great podcast. For so you can locally. just call Thanks, yours man. podcast jazz, man. It's just loose. It's just yeah. interpretive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. We're now we're gonna Rochambeau, and you know what? Because I love you, I'm gonna do your, your wacky ass four my four, man. four pump thing. My man. All right, let's practice it though, because you, right. you're all over me last time. Right. You always lean in like you're gonna attack me when you do I, this. It's, it's, it's <laughs> He's making a fist, I'm man. Just, He's like, ready. To, all right, so count it. Give me a lead, and don't you say ready? We need musicians. BPM. Get a four count, please. This is okay, one, say, two, three, go. This one, is I say two. Matt and I will never make love because we have. Before no you're gonna start, I'll count you in one, two, three, go. Okay, one. Two, three. No, I'm going to just count you in, though, and then you're going to start it. One, two, three, go. Oh. Oh, he got you. Second time. Look who won using mm. his bastard way. So we have three. Uh, you want to tell them the three stories before we guess? Indeed. The three stories are strippers in Alaska, recording in Minneapolis, and getting asked to dance in Cheyenne. Before you pick, do you have a clear cut one in your head? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. Let's hear it. <sighs> I so badly want it to be true. I just don't believe it. Recording in Minneapolis, I think, is the bull hooker. And I just, I want it. I want it so bad. But you remember the previous episode where I was like, tried to read the person, read how they respond, read what they were doing. I, the only tell I could pick up on you, man, was touching his ears while he was telling the Prince story. And then didn't touch ears for the other stories. That's all the only thing I noticed. I think during that time, my, my earring was flipped around. So Possible. I, I might have yeah. fell for it. But that's a good, a good thing to know if you're trying to get us to fall for something is give no us tells. false cues. That's right. Or, um, or fake it. So I just, dude, I love it. I want it to be real. I, I, it's not that I doubt you. It's that I, I just was trying to read you. And I'm not the greatest poker player, but I'm I'm, great, I'm gambling this one. That's great. Only one person has beat us both, Todd. So we'll see if you're number two. All right. And you got it written down on your board over there, so oh, don't yeah. don't pull it out quite yet. Okay. Uh, but for my bull hucker, I'm going to say strippers in Alaska <sighs> is the bull hucker. And and the reason the reason I think <sighs> that is because a uh, when you hit a moose, you don't go any further. Yeah, those things tend to make a dent in the. And I've driven a step van with Budweiser. I and those things don't. Uh, they don't go over an American they pothole. They are flipping huge. huge. Yeah, yeah. They huge. are they're clunky. Way larger than they look on TV, trust mm, me. Yeah. So uh, the, the whole moose story, yeah. 
The rest of it's pretty believable. You, all three stories you told are very believable. That's what I was and, feeling like. You and, know what I mean? Uh, so it's kind of, but every episode has been like that. Like, yes. I 100% agree. Yesterday, I caught her on the smallest detail. That's oh. why I got it right. She let one small thing slip, and that's how I caught her. But this one, yeah, I, I didn't notice the ear thing, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, Strippers in Alaska, and you're going to go with recording in Minneapolis. Yes. Todd, show but us I wanted, I show wanted us to be money. so true. Please be true. Please right. be true. Please be true. You can, you can move that. Uh, oh, my God. Please be true. Myself. Please be true. Please be true. Yep. <laughs> recording in the uh, – 2 and 0, baby! <laughs> Damn you. 2-0! Undefeated! But yeah! I, I had to work on it a little bit. I'm like, oh, pressure's on because uh, I, I have to base it on part back, which we did record in Metro Studio. I'm so disgusted right now. And, <laughs> That's how I feel! And, and we, ah! our, our, our manager was Dale, who did grow up with Prince. And so all that was true. <sighs> But Prince, and my guitar was that was a true story too. But Prince never did come in and, oh, man. and record with us. Oh man! Which would have just been mind blowing. What a pyrrhic victory! I but don't feel like I won. Tarzan, the stripper guy. That's, that's real. all true. That is real. <laughs> I, God is my witness, man. He oh, man. he did his thing and lifted her up, and it was so. Damn so if you're you. just clipping on this one. You got to go back and watch that. Two and zero. You are two and zero. Two and zero, baby. Undefeated. You know, uh, you know who Hoist Gracie is. Uh, yeah, yeah, the MMA guy. Yeah, do you know why he doesn't fight anymore? Why? Because nobody could beat him. They told <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they the told last him you're gone. I'm gonna be on. <laughs> they told him you don't get a fight no more. Oh, Boys, you're the king. Congratulations. <laughs> You know what? I hate Matt Gordon. I'm so bummed out though. Like that's I wanted it to be. I wanted right. to be wrong so bad, so bad. Because how badass of a story would that have been? It, if it, it was been true? And, oh and it could have totally God. happened because he he was, he was friends there, with yeah. Prince. He went to school with uh, Prince. He was our manager. Right. And we were there in Minneapolis recording in Metro Shoes, and he did have a private room there where he did recording. He had Paisley Part Two. But, you know, he had a little stuff all over the U.S. and stuff. Oh, yeah. But, so, yeah. And so I tried to make it as believable as I could. Well, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> Which but, even some of the other stories are pretty unbelievable, but they right. happen. Those are all true. But, I mean, so I know you've, I, you've been around the music scene for so long. That's why I assume that one was probably true. And it's weird because sometimes the most outrageous story told is the true is story. The true yeah. Story. That's Cy- why I kind of – because w- the last time we were here <laughs> – Brett Cyanide story. Yeah, Brett yeah. Cyanide story. You know Brett McRae from Ray? Yeah, right. Yeah, he comes in yeah, – He works at Ray Market. Yeah. 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 Brett McRae from Ray at Ray Market. And his, his buddy Ray works at the vault. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, well, Todd <laughs> – damn it. <laughs> hey, Larry, did you know I'm 2-0? Oh? I know you're 2-0. 2-0. Oh. Oh. I hate the you so much. The only undefeated host. Yeah. You are the yeah. – we only had one – John Beltran's the only person to beat us so far. Oh, yeah. He got us both. He got us both. Well, but he <sighs> wanted to believe it. Oh, yes. so bad, Todd. Yes. So bad. You wanted to be wrong, right? Right. I, so bad. Yeah. That's such a killer story. <laughs> and like just hearing, because that sounds like it sounds like something Prince would legitimately yeah. do. And well, just, I, just cruise I, into a session and just play a little bit. I was just watching a story. It was somebody Ugh. else. He went into a nightclub and he had a private back room with a ping pong table. And he, he just popped in and challenged this one guy to play ping Let's pong. play some ping pong. And he beat it ping pong. The guy went down to grab the ping pong ball, looked up, Prince was gone. gone. Just boop, boop. You know, so he did uh, that crap all the time. Before we go, did you ever watch the Chappelle show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With Prince on there. <laughs> yes. Where they, they played basketball because he was like, supposedly in high school, he was an all-state player. Yeah. Basketball player. He was, he was a stud. <laughs> but they played shirts and blouses, right? <laughs> Shirt, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, shirts and blouses. But he would slap. He would slap Charlie Murphy. Yeah. That's, why you slap me, Charlie Murphy? <laughs> he talk about prison just bitch slapping. You know, mm. such a great skit. Such a great skit. He's oh, got to bring man. that show back, man. That was. Oh, he is. He is hilarious. He's supposed to be doing a podcast. And yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be doing a podcast, and one of his first guests. I was just reading about this, like not even a day ago. Bill Burr. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, Bill favorite. Burr used to write for the Chappelle Show. Yeah. And so how cool would that be to get those two, oh, I mean, legends at this point, yeah, and he's, he's get one them one talking? The, he's one of the announcers on the race draft. Or, <laughs> yes. But and I he's mean, one of the announcers. I, don't, I mean, I know he did Prince really good, but Rick James. Rick is, James. Is, oh, yeah. I'm Rick James, man. I'm Rick James. Man. But if you go to the Commodores in Denver, he's, he's, a, he's a regular there. You know, he, he pops into the, the uh, open mic night all the time. I've heard him talk about how great the Denver comedy works as a well, bunch. Well, and so a lot of those guys said that he'll show up and he'll take him to the strip club some of the guys and just throw out the money might as well Chappelle's a good dude man but uh but I guess it's a rule that if you scream I'm Rick James bitch he'll have you kicked, kicked out because yeah. he's so tired of yeah. hearing you, you know what it's I mean? kind of <laughs> like what's his name with the cowbell thing oh Will Ferrell yeah, yeah. more cowbell well cowbell. no uh, oh no oh uh, what's his name I know you're thinking about yeah the guy who Damn said it. the line 
Oh, uh, uh, Christopher actor. Walker. Yeah. Christopher Walker. I'm going to need yeah. you to get a little more cowbell. A little more cowbell. He, he, he's like talking to Will Ferrell one time. He goes, you realize you ruined my career. You ruined my career. <laughs> <laughs> All anybody wants to say is more cowbell. Oh, I bet. Mm, I enough. bet he just hates it. Oh, oh, drag man. it in the mud. Well, Todd, thanks so much for coming on, man. You were great, man. Hell yeah, Todd. We're going to awesome. have you back, though, right? You got more stories. Yeah, I'll think of ones yeah, that I can okay. say that are PG rated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got stories, you know. We'll have the dark web episode. Long haired yeah, hippie long haired hippie traveling musicians. Oh yeah. I'm sure I you have, got a bunch. Yeah. I have tons. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Well before we get going, um I'm going to thank you for coming on. And uh, stick around, man. Stick around. We have a new person coming up with three brand new stories that I'm probably going to get wrong. And, well, Matt won't be here. I won't be here to, but, to uh, win again. <laughs> to win again. <laughs> but thank you so much. And, like, once again, if you want to c- check out uh, Todd and your new band is In the Groove. In the Groove Duo. Duo. You find us on Facebook. It's In the Groove trio. Duo. You got it. Slash Trio because sometimes we play as a duo with Heather and myself, and sometimes we play with my buddy Dean Jensen, who plays yep. guitar and electric violin with us, but we sound like a full band, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. Check it out, yeah, in the groove duo slash trio. It's a fun little group. We all play right. all. We're actually playing uh, this Sunday. We're playing the, the Poker Run. Oh, awesome, man. For the man. Chamber of Commerce. Hell we're yeah. playing there at the Moose Lodge. Yeah, October the 1st. Moose Lodge. Moose, you, you know you made it when you play when you're playing Moose the Moose Lodge, Lodge baby. That's right. They've actually remodeled that. It looks great, so... Yeah. Um, but once again, you can find that on the uh, episode 12 page on the bullhucker.com as, lo- as well as the Beat Around the Brush. Beat Around the Brush podcast. And it's, 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 it's it, spelled B-E-E-T, right? Yeah, B-E-E-T, like the sugar beet. Right, because we are the beet That's diggers. Clever. Yeah, we are I the, like it. We're the beat diggers here in Brush. <laughs> yeah, from very original. So thank you so much. Stick around. Three new stories. See you later. Peace. Hi guys, uh, well welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. We just got done with the Todd Allen episode, episode t- uh, twelve, and uh, we're back at episode thirteen. Uh, Adam's back, Mr. Vokey. Yep, I ran Matt out of here again. And I'm Moose from this uh, the previous. Uh, well, you know me, I'm Moose. And today we have <laughs> Andy Johnson with us. <laughs> Hi, how are you today? I'm good man, how are good. you? I'm great. Thanks for coming down from Greeley, bro. Yeah, nice drive up here, running through all the uh, feed lots. And oh yeah, yeah. I think that's maybe why Brush and Fort Morgan aren't more populated, because oh. people got right to that <laughs> feed lot and turned around and said, oh, "We'll just smell Greeley for the I rest was, of our I lives." I was going to say, "Are you really going to dog us on the Greeley smell?" I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Greeley's the one people, the, the, the one group of people who can't talk shit about how we smell down here. So it's actually the way you describe a smell. Like it stinks today. Does it smell like Greeley or does it smell like you know? I mean, it's actually specifically a smell now. Before we get into that, I will say uh, real quick, we're going to talk about the last episode. Um, as much as it burns my ass, uh, Matt Gordon two and oh man, this guy cannot. And the way he picked it out, as you'll, as you guys have already seen, is I guess Todd was uh, scratching his ear the whole time through that episode through the, oh, the bull okay. hucker. I was going to say, don't ruin it for me because I haven't heard it, but oh. I listen. I don't watch, so the oh, you're ear, fine. You're fine. I won't know when he's scratching you're his fine. ear. And that's what. So well, and, and Matt says it like, "Oh, you were scratching your ear during that one story, and that's why I picked it." And I thought. I wasn't paying attention to that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Mungo <laughs> stares at the wall sometimes, Andy. I'm not going to lie to you. And, uh, and I'd be damned if he got I missed it, obviously, because I'm crying about it. Um, I, I, I lost the uh, paper, rock, scissors. There's a shock. I'm horrible at that. <laughs> um, it's not my year, bud. Um, it's nobody's year. But I'm the one that made this podcast up. I got it all set up, and I'm the worst one at it, man, like everybody else. <laughs> Except Michelle. She's the one one. You suck more than me, Michelle. Thank you. Um but that was the last episode. It was a lot of fun. But now we're here with you in this episode, and uh, we were talking about smells. And it's funny because we ran comedy shows here for almost 10 years. And uh, we've had a few comics. Like Brent Tobler's one that comes to mind. He, he came back in. He goes, what the hell's that smell out there? And we're like, what smell, Brent? Because we're so used to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you nose blind to the degree really smell? No, I'm not. I, I, I I've lived there for 10 years. I've lived in Colorado for 10 years and Greeley for, I suppose, four I'm not nose blind to it at all. You can you can step out in the morning, and uh, it's just the most horrific smell in the world. And you just I just never get used to it. Right. You you know what it's from? I mean it's it's from the it's from the uh, JBS. Yeah, it's money. It smells it's, like money it smells to me. Like money. That's my grandfather. Exactly. Used to say. It smells like money when we walk by. Exactly. But I grew up on a on a uh, cattle farm. Had pigs. Had anything that could stink. We butchered it. <laughs> <laughs> and Greeley tops all that. 
It tops all that. It is the most god awful thing I've ever smelled in my life. So it smells like potpourri when you go back to the parents' house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when I go back to my parents' house, it's like, yeah, this smells normal. You know? Rotten corn. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Rotten corn, pig shit, cattle shit. It didn't matter. But you drive some past some uh, some of these feed lots. And uh, we were eating on the way up here. We had food in the car. Right. And I, I was trying hard to get all my food eaten before we got to the first <laughs> feedlot on 34 because you're done. <laughs> That's it. I'm all done now. <laughs> That's awesome. He goes back home and it's like a pervert smelling someone's panties, but he's just in that, that dirty corn all. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I missed you. <laughs> dirty greedy. <laughs> but Fort Morgan is just as bad with that sugar beet plant. So right. But it's a different stink. It's a it's, weird yeah. stink. So yeah. Whatever happened to that lawsuit that was going on? I don't know. I got a thing since I live fairly close to the beet plant. It was like some class action lawsuit thing. If you want to be part of it, fill this out, send it in. And I just checked it in the trash. No money for Adam, huh? <clears throat> I was good with not getting like twelve dollars and six cents <laughs> until something happens when you need twelve bucks. You're like, I know, right? <laughs> I'll call Moose. Hey, can you loan me fifteen bucks? I'll give you three because you threw twelve in the trash, bitch. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm not your financial support since you're irresponsible, Adam, and not knowing how to sue a corporation, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not so you're from minnesota you i'm said. from minnesota originally yeah. okay and what did bring you here originally uh during the crash of 09 i was doing construction work and everything completely went to hell in minnesota and so i moved to wyoming i uh was married at the time had have three kids and i went to wyoming to cheyenne wyoming to um do concrete work and after a year there um the work was good the money was great, so I decided to move the family down, and so we started out in Eaton, Colorado, and then uh, two weeks after I moved, two weeks after we got here, I lost the concrete job because you can't throw tools on a, on a job site, evidently. You're not allowed to. Like well, at people or just in general? <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not doing the job anymore. So, hey, hey, yeah, there's they, a safety coordinator right yeah. here, so that's why I ask. You <laughs> they, know? Can, they can frustrate you to the point where you may throw a tool or two. And so, How big a tool, man? Well, it was a uh, what they call a magnesium float. I don't, I don't know what that is. You know well, what that is. That's, you know what that is. It could be is. fairly sizable. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it can make a dent. So I left that job. <laughs> the uh, the owner of the company called me up after I hadn't shown up for about three or four days. He called me first, and he was yelling at me. And I hung up the phone. I said, well, I, I guess I'm going to find a new job. And he called me about four days later. He said, you, you haven't come back to work. I said, well, I kind of thought you fired me. <laughs> <laughs> you were pretty specific in the things you said, and you said we don't allow that to happen. So I moved on. <laughs> he says, he said, "Has your aim gotten any better?" You're like, "No." He's like, "You can come back and work then." You can come back and work. So I moved on, and I did some handyman work for a while. I worked for the post office wow. for two and a half years. With which a temper is, like it, that, are you sure that's a good idea? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is. You just don't driving down the street or walking down the street in any town. You don't realize the kind of things that go on until you walk the side streets every day and the people you see, um, Greeley especially. I, I kind of delivered in a little bit more of the rough part of Greeley. And uh, it was insane. So was it like Walmart in the wild? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking by one house one day and a woman come. She didn't come running out. She came sailing out onto the front lawn. And a big guy was walking behind her. He had thrown this woman out of his house. Oh, wow. And I, I said, hey, I said, we don't throw women. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. Just tools, you just, bastard. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, and, uh, I said, hey, I said, we don't throw women. And she was up and gone. She, she, she hit the ground, got back up, and ran for the hills. And this, he was a big guy, and, and he said, hey, man, I'm sorry, but, you know, she, she made me mad. I should have never let her violate the restraining order by coming back into the house. <laughs> he had a restraining order on her. On a, a restraining order on her, and then she frustrated him, and he threw her out of the house. Uh, he threw I her out of the 50 house. 50 feet. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, she came flying out of that house, never touched the top deck, never touched the steps, right out into the lawn. And here I am with my, you know, my postal uniform, just like, wow, this is something. <laughs> we don't throw women. 
I just didn't know what else to say. Oh my like, <laughs> that thought's going to hit me tomorrow at work, and I'm just going to start giggling for we no don't reason. Throw it. It's a good rule. As it's as a the, good rule. Uh, as the little dun dun dun. The more you know comes on. You know. Exactly. <laughs> Hey Andy, I'm Andy the mailman. We're here to we're here to show we don't shot put women, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's a big fr- no no. When you're frustrated, use your words. <laughs> we don't throw women. And that's a good rule for your kids out there too. Yep. I'm that's to. brought to you from the bud, the bullhucker, the bud hucker podcast. <laughs> Jesus. The bullhucker podcast. We don't throw women. <laughs> that's gonna be the, that should be the uh, We need to make a shirt. <laughs> Bull the bullhucker, we don't throw women. We throw bullhucker, not women. <laughs> <laughs> and then after I left the post office, I went and worked for the railroad. Um, I worked for a little railroad in Windsor, Colorado, for four and a half years, where I still I still hold the record for a number of derails in a career. <laughs> so that was nice. <laughs> it's what? upwards of six with over a million dollars worth of damage. <laughs> wow. And that is not bullhucker. <laughs> that is real. That's, I wish I could make that up. That's blatantly irresponsible is what that is. That's, not a <laughs> that's a safety guy's nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and all of, those, all of those derails were under 10 miles an hour. Were on, I, I, I What's the going, average derail at? Well, I have no idea, but oh. this was this was a kind of bad track. And, and it was all rated for 10 miles an hour. So when you when you derail like that, it isn't like in the movies where stuff just implodes and flies all over. It just gently tips over, and then you drag it a little bit longer, and then you just stop. You just come to a stop. And then you look in your rearview mirror. Like one of them was coming out of Fort Collins into Windsor, and I had sand cars. I had 100 sand cars, and I tipped over, I think, 15 of them. And so <laughs> when they tipped over, somebody thought that, it was, that there was chemicals in there. It wasn't just sand, fracking sand. Um, and so they called everybody. And so I looked in my rearview mirror. Now, when something like this happens, you can't get out of the front of the... You can't, I didn't have a conductor with me, and uh, I was in the engine, so I couldn't get out. I had just had to call for help. And I'm watching the emergency vehicles come down the road behind me. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's one cop after another, and ambulances and fire trucks and, and emergency vehicles, mm-hmm. because somebody thought there was chemicals inside there. Nice. And so, and all it was was sand. <laughs> but it, that was 610 feet of track, a million dollars worth of damage, in a heartbeat. Did you still work there? After yeah, that? I did. That one? I did. Yeah, he I went did on for, for number two. <laughs> I'd really like to stick around, sir, and try and go for the record. I mean, it's in my I'll do, sights. I'll do better, sir. It'll be 17 cars next yes. time. I want to be the Tom Brady of derailing shit. Please. The GOAT. The GOAT. <laughs> well, uh, we, how we know you is you started into stand-up comedy. Yeah. When did you, how, how'd you get into that? How'd that happen? Um, the, the, the joking answer, the, the answer that I use on stage, uh, is, is that uh, after a particularly poor performance in bed, uh, my girlfriend said to me, you must be some kind of a comedian or something. <laughs> but uh, That's all I got to tell me, except she said, boy, you better be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better be funny because you ain't good at this. <laughs> but how it really happened was is, is um, I just always like to make people laugh uh, as, a, as a kid. You know, it, it kind of, right. I wasn't a very big guy, and so I still had a big mouth, and so that gets you into trouble. Sure. And so to defuse the situation... I learned to think a little faster on my feet than other people, make jokes about the person that was going to, you know, crush your face. And you still got your face crushed, but at least you got your, you yeah, know, you fun, got the rip yeah, in once in a while. Doing it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so the first time I ever did comedy was in the eighth grade. And I did it at a talent show in the school theater. Wow. And then I didn't do it again until I was in my 30s. That's a pretty familiar story, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. I, I was, started when I was 31. Okay. Adam was, okay. I was 31 all the way through. 31, right? yep. And you were 30? Well, I mean, I suppose probably 35 or 36 was okay. the first time I did an open mic, and that was in Minnesota. And it was, it was quite a ways for me to travel, and so I, I really wasn't able to do it consistently. And so I came to Colorado. That also sounds like a very familiar story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was busy, also busy raising kids. My kids were young. And so I came to Colorado and um, discovered the Down Under. Oh, nice. <laughs> and actually, the first place that I did comedy, <laughs> the first place that I did comedy was at, um, is a little bar in Greeley uh, called the Jaeger. 
and they had an okay. open they had an open mic night there downstairs yeah downstairs yeah, 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 yeah. uh but it wasn't for music it was for blues it was for for yeah. or it was for music excuse me it wasn't for comedy and um it was like at midnight on a tuesday sure of course and i called him up and i said hey i said can i you know come by and and do comedy so just to look like everybody else, I would carry a guitar with me. I can't play guitar. But I would, <laughs> I would take the guitar with me, and then I would put my notes on top of the guitar, and then I would videotape myself. And the problem was is the notes are down here. You're looking out here, and I'm you know, on the videotape. I'm, I'm in this unnatural position trying to read three freaking jokes because that's all I had. Right, right. Three jokes, and then every so often... I just hit the, right? And that was all I had. You know, I had like a minute and a half of material. That's awesome. And, and you know, you're just in front of a b- bunch of drunk college kids. When uh, we were doing, we've been doing comedy shows, we started the Clarion Inn. And there's many times that someone has came to me or Adam says, I want to try this. So we'd give, we'd give anybody five minutes for, to, to, to pop their cherry on stage. Yeah. And there was a maintenance man. I don't remember his name. What was his name? Do you remember? I can't remember him. So many years ago. But I remember his so prop. Yeah. So what he did, <laughs> Andy, is uh, before the show, we look up there, and there's this huge fire truck toy. This thing was pretty. It was old school die yeah, cast like, metal. Yeah, it was like old metal, probably two foot long or so. Yeah, it's a big one. It was a big fire and truck. he didn't talk about it at all, did he? I don't even I don't remember know. him yeah, talking about and it. I, it, it. I was like, what, what's with the fire truck? He goes, I just thought it'd be cool. I go, it wasn't. It really wasn't. <laughs> it was not cool yeah, at all. It was, uh, it was very confusing is what that was, sir. What's the weirdest thing you've seen on stage? Somebody do like something like that. The, well, um, I saw somebody come up come up on stage with a shovel, and that was at um, the Down Under. A shovel? He had a shovel. He had a small shovel, and uh, it looked like Charles Manson, anyways, right? But he'd come up there with a shovel and he'd talk. It was a whole joke, and it had something to do with the shovel, and and I can't remember the whole the whole premise of it, but he would talk with the shovel. And it was it was actually quite entertaining. He it was like Charles weird. Manson. Was it Tobias? <laughs> yeah, it was Tobias. Yeah. Yeah. It was very very entertaining. You do it, Tobias, <laughs> with a shovel, dude. You weirdo. He'll explain it to you. Love you. Um, but uh, and I can't remember the premise of it. But but it was it was quite entertaining. And and so really, um, the Down Under was my first taste of a comedy club. Besides the couple of times in Minnesota, which were. Which are very small, which wasn't much. It's such a small community at times. Uh, Lance Schwintz, uh, I'm just giving out names here. He's our, our uh, recreation guy in town, and one day I was at Sparky's house on a beer with him. And he was telling us they went up to this, uh, this big convention up in South Dakota, and uh, <clears throat> there was a comedian there. He said the guy got on stage, and he was hilarious. He said this guy was a killer. And uh, he asked us, where are you from? We're like, Brush, Colorado, and he knew us. The guy says, do you know Moose and Adam? And they're like, yeah, I know those guys. Was it Spencer? He didn't remember the guy's name. That's what's killing me. I'm like, Because well, I, kn- I know Spencer do- we used to do shows in Rapid ma- City. Maybe, I don't know. But he, uh, like, what was the guy's name? He's like, I don't know. I was like, you're killing me. Why didn't you tell me this What story? was one of the jokes? Yeah. Maybe we can get yeah, it that exactly way. Exactly right, right. right. <laughs> and I'll finish it for you. That's how that is. So. Um, the Down Under, they're, they're redoing something now. The Millennium Event The Center? Millennium Theater. I, they, I know that they're going to have um, shows every Friday night. Okay. But I don't know much about it other than that. They've been kind of quiet about it. I saw a schedule got put out Yeah, somewhere. they did, because Tobler's on that schedule. And, yeah, and uh, Rick Bryant. And Rick Bryant. Stroop. Yeah. It's good. So. It's a good lineup, you know. Yeah. A bunch of good dudes out of Denver, so. And then after that closed, then it was Outriders, and, and I've listened to a few of your podcasts, and Outriders always gets mentioned, because sure. that was what was going on in Greeley. Sure. That was what every Wednesday was right. Outriders, and that was a lot of fun. It was just a small little community of people that went, and, and every so often somebody else would show up, but it, that was a, an awful lot of fun, was Outriders. Aloise is going to come do this podcast. Is he? We just got to figure out, his, his schedule's pretty busy, it sounds sure. like, so he's got some stuff going on, but... Uh, yeah, he'll come down, and then Jen and, and you, that's how you guys met, right, mm-hmm. with Outriders. And you and I met in the uh, receiving bay of a milk factory. Exactly. That's where you and I met. Well, I knew who you were before that, but I had never, we had never met. Right, right. So, yeah, that's where we met. Are you, are you, you're not receiving there anymore, are you? Nope, nope. I, I work in another part of the plant okay. now. You're yeah. a second Leprino guy to be on here, so. Wow. Right, right. Top two, buddy. Exactly. Sean, I'm in the top two Leprino employees. That's Sean, awesome. Yeah, Sean Kelly's a cheesemaker, but I'm not sure what Sean did. he say what he did? He, that's in a control room all day, he said, so that doesn't narrow it down at all. 
I'm not sure. That name doesn't sound familiar. So he's I in Fort be. Morgan. He's in Fort oh, Morgan. Oh, he's in Fort Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's why. He's, that's he's why. one of these those Morgan cheese bastards, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing that for? Uh, two and a half. It'll be three years in December. Cool. Cool. I left the railroad. Yeah, we'll, we'll say willingly. Right. And right. <laughs> then went over to Labrino. Right. And uh, so I've been working there ever since. They, just to let you drive the truck or anything. That's what they, they do not let me drive vehicles. Well, no, got, exactly. Well, Nothing, with <laughs> Nothing with wheels. Nothing with wheels. Smart. <laughs> exactly. When I got the job at Budweiser, uh, I, I took the bus down here because I really didn't have a car. I had like a piece of shit car. And so I took my mom's Dodge Stratus to the interview. And I've already told, I've already told oh, you this story. I've heard of this story. <laughs> so I said it for my bull hucker. That's what I was going to say. So they didn't have the little concrete uh, parking spots by the ditch. I have heard this story. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, I get the interview, and I, I, did, I it was in neutral. I guess I didn't put it all the way into gear. And mom's car rolled into the ditch, and the ass was, ass end was sticking out. I walked out, and I, I look at it, and I'm like, well, there's no way I'm going to you know, hulk this thing and drag it out, man. So I'm like, son of a bitch. So I go back in there. I'm like, hey, does someone can someone tow me? I kind of. Went a little bit in the ditch, and they came out, and they're like, a little bit in the ditch, my God. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And then John Johnson's like, you're going to let this guy drive our truck. Yeah. And, and they still hired him. They still hired me. <laughs> so it's a crazy world. You just know pe- people need help because they don't give a shit. They don't give did. a damn. Was it drugs? Did you attack anybody? <laughs> Are you dangerous in any way? You just derailed some shit? Well, you're not driving here, so welcome yeah. aboard. Well, you know, one of the one of the stories that I was thinking about telling, and, and I guess I can tell it because it's not one that I that have on the list, was – I blew my brakes out in Minnesota, heading to a job, incidentally, with the railroad that I worked for there, too. And I blew the brakes out on my old Suburban. And I had to get to work. And I didn't have any way to stop except to get into the grass of the, of the median, right? And so I blew them out at a light. I went around the cars, went through the frick, that particular intersection before I realized what was going on. And then after that, I'm like, well, it seems like I kind of have control over it. I mean, I had zero brakes, but I, it seems like I kind of got this under control, right? right? So when I would come up to a light, I would just pull over past the right-hand turn lane, get it in the grass or against the curb, get it to stop, and then, <laughs> right, and then put it in park and then pull out. Right. And so I made it all the way to work. I, I went past the turn. I had to take a left-hand turn into work, into the rail yard, but I was going too fast. So I went past that, stopped it on the left-hand side in the tall grass, made a U-turn, came back around, and then turned into the rail yard. And then I had a decision to make. The big light pole, stop yourself with the light pole, or stop yourself against the chain link fence. And I just rolled in, put it in neutral, and just stopped myself against the chain link fence. Just <laughs> came, to <a> stop. <laughs> came to a stop. There was a whole bunch of people out in the out in front of the building and they saw it happen and uh i just hopped out like nothing was going on <laughs> hey guys i'm at work <laughs> <laughs> and it just went in and went out and i talked to those guys um just about a year ago and they said there's still a big bow in the fence is there really <laughs> and that was i don't know 15 years that's awesome <laughs> there's still a bow in the chain link fence where i stopped myself you didn't open the door and try to fred flintstone it <laughs> <laughs> i did not the suburban was too high the only oh, chance okay. that i had it was just running into something at that point. So you had to buy an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> and then it got towed home. I towed it home after that. Oh, I boy. didn't yeah. You're hired. Can I get a ride? <laughs> <laughs> Boss. <laughs> well no, I had already worked there for I probably already worked there for a year. Oh, okay. All right. And you know, you just the older you get the bigger collection of stupid shit. I love it. That you do. I love it. You know. You know it's uh money because there's uh the one of the chamber, the president, Teresa, uh, said her daughter would be good at this. And she probably, she might very well be good at this. But it, this is a podcast I think guys our age will, be, will excel at because you've had a lifetime of, like you said, stories where you just completely shit down your leg. I got, I got. Oh, yeah. I've had enough to fill 10 episodes so far, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. You know, my mom was on and, I mean, she's like, there's other stories I could have told you, but. I don't want to. I'm like, God, thank you. I don't, <laughs> you well, know? but it was difficult to come up with the lie. Everybody says that. It's difficult to come. I mean, you could just lie through your teeth about something that's absolutely not believable. Right. But some of the things that happen to you, and it's the same for everybody, Mm -hmm. are so unbelievable that I was almost like, well, I'll just tell them that one's a lie because that one doesn't seem believable anyways. But I I came up with one. Okay. I came up with one. We're going to head that way. So before I get started with this, let me ask you this, Andy. Out of the three stories, one is a lie, obviously, like we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Is Is it made up or did you borrow it? Um, it's a little bit of both. Um, okay. 
it's it's a fib. Okay. It's not borrowed from anybody. It's a fib. And then I'll, I'll explain to you further with that. But, Fair enough. Yeah, it's definitely a fib. Okay. Um, you've already seen the uh, story if you're watching this or listening to this. So what we do on the Bull Hucker is uh, we have our guest, Andy Johnson, on today. And he's going to tell us three stories. Yeah. Uh, two of them are true. One of them, like we just said, is a lie, a fib. It's up to Adam and I to try and figure out that. Well, it's Adam and me to get it wrong. That's what it is. And, <laughs> and then when I get it right, I rub it in his face because that happens once every five episodes. You know what I mean? I get super happy about yeah. it. But uh, we try and figure it out. Now, when he's telling these stories, listen carefully. And when you're watching this, make sure on the YouTube comments, leave your guess. Because we're going to do the three stories. And then next episode, you'll be back to do your reveal. So yeah. um, please make sure you do that. That's the most fun. I think the most fun mm-hmm. is when people actually... Uh, comment and you get to see all your friends trying to guess which one they think is the bull hucker. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, we're going to get started. This Adam, you, you know what you missed last week, so go ahead and pick, dude. <clears throat> all right. Um, since I love all things automotive, I'm going to go with Demo Derby on two wheels. I knew he's going to pick that. I just, <laughs> I just knew that was his. <coughs> okay, here we go. Um, I was in the Army at Fort Benning, Georgia, and uh, one Friday I was reading the paper. I was, I was reading the paper, and in the paper, Columbus Herald, I think they called the paper, um, was this little advertisement, and it said, motorcycle drivers needed. I said, oh, you can read a little bit further, and it says, for a demolition derby. I thought, well, that's going to be kind of cool, right? <laughs> how, old, right? how old are you at this point? I was probably 19 years old, okay. maybe 20, but I wasn't any older. So you're unbreakable. I'm unbreakable. Okay. I'm at, at the time. I'm airborne. I'm jumping out of airplanes. Risks, you know. You're taking risks every day. I mean, that's what you did. So, this is right up my alley. Right. The only thing is, I'd never really ridden a motorcycle. <laughs> that's a problem. But I called, and they said, "Well, we have the motorcycles for you. Uh, you just got to bring your own safety equipment." I said, okay. Right. Cool. <laughs> so I bring gloves. Were either of you guys in the military ever? No. no. Okay. Well, uh, what they call a K-pot, which was your Kevlar helmet. Okay. I bring I bring gloves, my Kevlar helmet, and I think somebody gave me some knee pads or something. Other than that, I'm wearing jeans, boots, and a regular shirt. Right. And uh, head down to this arena where they're going to have a uh, the the uh, four wheel drive car crushing and all that kind of thing. Sure, right. Sure. Uh, Saturday and Sunday they're going to have this, and they told me over the phone, "We'll provide the motorcycle. You take care of that, and uh, you're going to be in kind of a race and then a demolition derby before the show, and then we'll do the last heat uh, midway through at the intermission. And if you win the demolition derby, we'll send you and a friend to Hawaii. That's the grand prize. That's right? awesome." What they don't tell me is, is that within each heat, there's four ringers. There's four people that are fully kitted up from the helmets down to the big weighted gloves to the big chest protectors, knee pads, everything. And they're riding good motorcycles and they (laughs) kick the living hell out of you every time you get near them. And they were good riders. They were good drivers. They would uh, kick their motorcycle out from underneath them. And it would go spinning across the floor, right. and it would be knocking guys off their motorcycles and everything. It was brutal. I really want to see this. It was it was incredible. <laughs> and so the first we we do this race, and it's just go round and around and around and around. Right. But these things are leaking oil. It's a concrete floor, so we're falling, we're slipping in the oil uh. and, and taking out others, and it's a blast. And so then this first heat, I'm on this old Yamaha, and. It starts out, he drops the flag, and we're on either side, just like a demolition derby, and then you're going to come into the middle. And my throttle sticks, so I go zooming across the floor, (laughs) and they have um, straw bales set up. I go zooming across the floor, slam into the straw bale, go up over the straw bale, and then slam into the wall of the arena (laughs) where my bike stops. That's it for me. I'm all done. And then I have to sit there while these guys just kick the living hell out of me. Every time they go by, they just reach out with their boot and give me a kick. (laughs) Just bang. (laughs) Just give me a kick. So I think I'm all done. But the guy says, well, this is all for entertainment, so we're just going to have everybody in the second heat. We're just going to have everybody in the second heat and and just everybody go for it. Well, at this point now you realize you're not going to win. Nobody's going to Hawaii. These guys are going to make sure that one of them wins. You're being used. We used, but why not? Sure. This is great, right? That's awesome. (laughs) So the next time the guy is in the middle and he's going to drop the flag and he accidentally drops it out of his hand. Right. 
So in my mind, at this point, I've figured out how everything is going on. So I clamp down on the frickin' throttle, and I race forward, and I run over his flag before he's able to pick it up. <laughs> I just, nobody else in the, everybody else is around the arena, and I just race forward right. and run over his flag. Piss this guy off. Right. But the crowd laughs and cheers and everything, and I go back to my spot, and he's just glared at me, right? So now I'm thinking, well, all these ringers are just going to be, be thumping on me, right? which is exactly what happened, right. except my motorcycle stayed running. I had blood running down my leg by the end of it. My handlebars were bent way down. <laughs> <laughs> the motorcycle is barely running, but I'm put putting around. I'm kicking other people. <laughs> I did not go to Hawaii, but it was a lot of fun. I had blood running down my legs. I was bruised up. These guys were just beating the hell out of me, and it was great. No Hawaii, just an emergency room. <laughs> just, but it was, it was free, to, free trip there. Yeah, exactly. Who wants to go to Hawaii? Sounds like you're already in paradise. <laughs> oh, it was great. And, and, you know, you weren't just like sliding up on each other. At a certain point, you got frustrated with the other people, so you were running headlong into other motorcycles, right? <laughs> and people were just, you know, hitting each other, slamming into each other. Guys are flying all over. People are crawling around on the concrete trying to get out of the way. The crowd is going crazy. <laughs> That's it was great. awesome. <laughs> that does sound awesome. I've seen a lot of demolition derbies, but I've never seen a motorcycle. Like, now I really want yeah. to. Yeah, oh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> He's got a little redneck boner right now. That's what's going on right there. <laughs> 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 little chubs that Adam's got, you know. And and it was free. We we paid no entry fee, but I got a T-shirt. Oh God, no, because then they're liable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Then they're liable. But I got a T-shirt that said, "I survived the demolition. I survived the motorcycle demolition derby." I don't have it anymore. I don't have it anymore, um, and it wouldn't fit me even if I did have it, but uh, it was a lot of fun. So when you uh, had that incident with the Suburban running into the fence, that wasn't your first uh, rodeo. Uh, with that's that not the first thing. rodeo, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been bumping into some shit. You yeah. just looked at the guns, at least I didn't get thrown into the wall, huh? It's getting better, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a good story, and yeah, I liked it. It was a lot of fun. Kind of jealous I didn't pick that one. So, All right, what do you think? I don't know. I like. I, I don't you know. want that to be true. I, I want that to be true so bad, <laughs> so so bad. We were talking when you came in. There's always stories you hear that you want to be true. Uh, Todd Allen's story. There's one that Matt he wanted it so bad to be true. I won't ruin it for you, but then you you guys already know what happened. But um, there's a story, and it's based in Minnesota. So, and Matt's like, man, I he picks it, and he's like, but I want it to be true so bad. So, I don't know. It's it's a it's a good thing. It's fun. I wanted the uh, Josh Finley drugs are a drag to be true. That's oh, what yeah. I wanted more than anything. And yeah, I got no doubt. Yeah. Disappointed with that one because little Josh Finley with a <laughs> drug diaphragm makes me laugh. And I think this <laughs> day, you know. diorama, not a diaphragm. What I say? A, di a drug diaphragm. Oh well, you know what I mean. Maybe it went somewhere. <laughs> diaphragm diagram. Because <laughs> that's where they have to go if they eat the fuzz cup. So just so you know, uh, little you know he's probably a little chunky at that age. He's walking with this smiling. <laughs> oh, well, that'd be true. walking with it with all his dad's <laughs> drug paraphernalia in a suitcase. <laughs> Want some coke, bitch? All right. All right, my turn. Uh, so the ones we have left are helicopter landing pad and ice cream with an eagle. I'm going to take ice cream with an eagle. Oh, my Good. goodness. This is awesome. If any, anybody who knows me for more than five minutes knows that the one band that I adore more than anything is the frickin' Eagles. Oh, boy. I love the Eagles. I love the Eagles. Nice. And... Uh, I got the opportunity in Los Angeles, California, visiting, believe it or not, I walked into a Dairy Queen behind Don Henley, lead singer of the Eagles, right? And I mean, I spend my day at work singing Eagles songs, right. Desperado, it's terrible, I'm not going to wreck it, but, but so, so to meet, and, I, and I'm, I'm starstruck anyways, right? I get starstruck really easily. Wow. Uh, it, it's just amazing to me, you know, some of the things that these people are able to do. Sure. I put out the music they do, the acting they do, the comedy they do or whatever. Agreed. It's amazing. But normally, and, and the other times that I actually have um, seen famous people or anything, I've left them alone. Mm -hmm. But this is Don Henley. Right. And he would fully expect for you to come up <laughs> and talk to him. Sure. True. So that's exactly what I did. I came up to him at the counter, and all I was able to manage to say to him was, 
I love you, Don Henley. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. Man. That's not creepy at all. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking it's Don Henley. It's probably there's probably been a lot worse said to him. Sure. Probably been a lot better. It's so all I managed to squeak out is, "I love you, Don Henley." <laughs> and in true Don Henley fashion, because I think I've heard he's kind of a prick, right? He seems that way, right? right? He just looks at me and doesn't say anything. But that's it, man. <laughs> that was it. I was actually able to meet. I would. I would call him my hero. Yeah. My, oh yeah, yeah, my musical hero. I'm a fan of his uh, independent stuff as oh, much yeah. as anything else. He's great, you know. Cass County, the last album he put out, it's probably been five years. Great, great music. I don't know if I've heard that one. That's uh, yeah, I think it was kind of put out on a smaller label, but right. a little more country, a little more Americana, okay. but yeah, really, really good music. Did you uh, throw down the cash when they came to what was it Mile High Stadium last time? Were they like three hundred bucks a ticket or some crazy shit? <sighs> I don't love them that much. Yeah, no, I would no. you? <laughs> no, you know it's it's a it's outrageous the amount that they can that they can get. But right. if the market bears it, why not make the money? Oh, people are right. gonna pay it, man. People are gonna you pay know? it. You might as well charge it. Uh, the girlfriend wants to go to a Bronco game this year. I told her, baby, that's those tickets are gonna be insane amounts of money because there's only five thousand people in the stands. I've said, you know what I mean? Those tickets yeah. are gonna be insanely yeah. expensive. So. I get it. Although I, we bought tickets to the Motley Crue Poison Def Leppard concert, they got uh, postponed because of COVID this year, and those yeah. were like it's pretty expensive. But I'm a big Motley Crue fan, so. Well, being you know being so few people in the stadium, the players might hear you <laughs> yelling. <laughs> Whereas before, you got fifty thousand people, you're pretty anonymous, right? Right. But if you're if you're really ripping on somebody, they're gonna know who's doing it. Or if you say something creepy like. Hey, Drew Locke, I love you. The CS. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point taken. Yeah. I understand that completely. You'd be like the ogre in uh, aisle four, is uh, or row four. Uh, well, it got it got pretty uncomfortable. I got my dilly bar and I left. <laughs> well, when I saw the title "Ice Cream with an Eagle," I like had a vision of you like on a mountain with like an actual like caca. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, oh, yeah, I want to. Yeah, you want to know about that? No, it wasn't that. It wasn't yeah. that pristine and magical and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I'm not going to climb a freaking mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I pictured the whole uh, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings thing, like flying out of Mordo and an eagle. I knew that's what it was. It was, but I had a picture of Andy like. Licking his ice cream on an eagle. I said, man, that'd be badass. <laughs> Although it's probably bullshit. I'm not picking that no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, short and sweet. I like that one. So we got one left. All right. That leaves a helicopter landing pad. I told you before that I was in the Army. And uh, I was fortunate enough to, to be able to have the best of both worlds. I was actually a cook in the Army. And so I was in garrison. A lot. I didn't always have to go out to the field, but when I did get to go out to the field, we always had a lot of fun. I always got to do things right. that were fun. As I said, I was airborne and, and everything else. So in this particular case, we had gone to Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, and things had gone wrong for us from the beginning. Okay. It was in 1992, and uh, make make that part of the story a short one. A, uh, a non-commissioned officer had been uh, had captured by the opposing force that we were going against. And he had all of the coordinates, map coordinates for missions and things like that in his top pocket. So when they, when they got that, they knew exactly our movement, where we're going to go, everything. And since I'm in the headquarters element, I'm going to come in a little bit later on a helicopter. And we're going to set up a casualty collection point. We're going to set up POW, uh, prisoner of war. And that's what I did. And uh, so we land, and I'm, the chaplain is next to me because he's in the headquarters element. And the chaplain has somebody with him that night that's what's called an observer controller mm -hmm. that is going to watch the chaplain do his job. The different officers in the different positions, they would have people watching them do their job. Everybody had a card in their other pocket that uh, if they were wounded notionally wounded they pulled the card out and then a, an observer controller that was running this entire thing would say okay you're wounded you're wounded in this way so now you had to treat this person as a casualty so make it very very realistic if somebody wasn't able to walk and they were wounded then that particular group that they were wounded with would have to haul that person so make it make it very very realistic and in this particular case um, because this had all happened earlier where they had gotten all the coordinates for our movement and everything, 
we landed in a very, very small area that was completely ringed with gunfire. Okay. And as I said, no, this is just practice. I, I don't want to give the wrong impression. But it's completely ringed with gunfire from the opposing force. They're fighting they're they're fighting our element probably thirty or forty yards deep into the woods, right? Right. And so we're we're sitting in this little tiny area and then we have helicopter gunships going around us and this is all the closer that we can get. And then they start cas they start calling for helicopters to bring out casualties. And uh, the helicopter would land in the field, and then they would come out of the woods, and they would bring all these guys that were supposedly wounded onto the helicopters, and they would fly away. It's incredibly realistic training. And it really makes you think, okay, you know, if you mess up, you're going to be one of these people, and your buddies are going to have to haul you, you, you know. I mean, it's, so it's a very, very realistic training. Right. And at some point, they, they've gotten so many casualties now that they tell me to go out into this field in the dark, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning, and grab these chem lights, and they're infrared chem lights, so they only show up with night vision, and bring a helicopter in this field so we can load up more casualties. So they hand me these chem lights, and now what you, if I cracked one and we were, it was in the dark, you couldn't see it. It's only through the night vision okay. so they, that the helicopter pilots have. It's like a flare almost, or is it? Just... No, um, have you ever seen those Halloween chem lights? Well, they, they drop into pits in movies, right? So yeah, they, okay, like, okay. Yeah. Like, uh, but in glow the sticks. Yeah, okay. glow sticks. Okay. But in the military, they have ones that are infrared. So you could only see them, as I said, with the night vision. They wouldn't show up in the dark. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, right? Pretty cool shit. Uh, so I have these in my hands. And now, I'm a young private. I'm, I'm 20 years old at the most, maybe even 19. And... I've never brought a helicopter in in my life. I've ridden in them, but I've never landed a helicopter in the middle of a field, <laughs> ever. You never rode a motorcycle either. That didn't exactly. stop you. It didn't stop me. <laughs> exactly. So when the guy gets out of the helicopter and kicks you in the face, you had that one coming. <laughs> exactly. I, I figured it's coming. I'm my first rodeo, you bastard. Kick me again. So uh, the the guy in charge of this little, this little element, he crawls up to me and he goes, grab these go out in that field and bring the helicopter in you'll hear it in a minute I said okay so i go out in the field now it's dark and so i can stand up and so i'm standing up and i got a chem light in each hand and i can see the shadow of the helicopter big chinook helicopter with the two rotors you've seen them before i'm sure and i'm bringing the helicopter in like i think i should like you'd bring a truck in right right i'm landing a helicopter <laughs> okay <laughs> As the, as the helicopter lowers, now with night vision and these bright lights in their eyes, you can't really see me. You can just see the chem lights moving. <laughs> so whatever the helicopter pilot is thinking, I don't know. But thinking about it later, he probably never even saw a human being. He just saw, he just saw lights, right? <laughs> so he comes over the top of me, and as he begins to lower the prop wash, knocks me down and begins to blow me through the field right. backwards the prop wash uh, the from, the, from the rotor okay. Okay. it's a tremendous amount right and these, this, these are big helicopters it begins to knock me backwards and now i'm just rolling in a ball <laughs> and as i every time i get a chance to look up the helicopter is following me <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm scared out of my mind, man. And but but all I'm gripping these freaking lights, and that's when I realize the helicopter's following me because he can't see me. He just sees the lights, and I'm sure he just saw the lights swirling like this. But he's gonna follow the lights. He's asking his co-pilot, "What's the, what's that mean? What's that hand gesture?" Yeah. <laughs> well, nobody told me to throw the effing lights down on the ground, so I'm holding on to him as I'm getting blown across this field. He wants us to barrel roll, <laughs> barrel roll. <laughs> and he's this helicopter is just following me. And if you you've probably never seen a helicopter from the bottom, but no, this <laughs> no, okay, this helicopter looks like a freaking school bus, and it's it's probably. 15, 20 feet above me. Oh, shit. And it's now that I've gotten the hell blown out of me, I've stopped. And that's when I realized I still got the chem lights in my hands, and he's starting to come down. 
because, okay, well, I guess this is where <laughs> we're going to land. <laughs> <laughs> and I threw them chem lights about as far as I possibly could and ran the hell out of the way and whomp. He landed just right next to me. He scared the crap out of me. Did you scream like a girl when you threw it? Yeah. If I did, nobody would have heard it because of the freaking noise. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That's great. That's and, great. And what was funny about that whole thing is uh, earlier in the night when we had earlier in the night when we had landed, we had had to um, we had had to take cover in, in kind of a brushy area. Right. And I'm I'm right next to the chaplain, like I said. Right. And he said, hey, "You better put on your you better put on your gas mask because they just gassed us. They just gave us CS gas." Sure. So I put on the mask, and it's nice and warm in the mask, and it's comfortable. I fell asleep. I went to sleep, right? <laughs> We're under fire. I went to sleep, right? When I woke up, there's nobody around. So I'm, I'm just sleeping in the brush. I don't know how long I've been asleep. So I got to go try and find the element. They just packed up and left and moved about 100 yards behind me. But I had no idea. I just woke up. Like, well, That's got to be a worse feeling than falling asleep in history in <laughs> high school. Like, and I'll be like... Oh, hell, class is over. <laughs> yeah, class is over, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how long I've been asleep, nothing. So I, I wander back to the group, and then, you know, like I said, a few minutes later, probably I'm still probably groggy from my nap. Sure. He hands me two chem lights and says, hey, bring in a helicopter. Sure, why not? <laughs> Am I dreaming? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great story. And you're a good storyteller. I'll give you that. That's, I appreciate that's good. it. Yeah, no, that's good. What do you think, man? Oh, this is going to be tough. I got one in my, I have a, I have a clear cut one, I think, right now. Well, I'll explain to you why I think it is. I'm taking a big leap of faith here on one. And there's a certain reason I'm going to pick one. There's a big leap of faith, though. So we'll see. You? You, you don't know. I don't know. Those are some. I mean, Listen, he's actually got a winning record, so he has to worry about this. Me, if I, if I, I miss it, yeah, I just miss it. He's got something to lose. I, 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 like, to lose, I like getting so. my own mind. <laughs> Uh, okay. So the demo derby one, that was at a like a an arena, an arena, or Columbus a, Columbus Arena in Columbus, Georgia. And then there was like off road races or uh, you know like trucks the car cars, monster trucks, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you name the other uh, four member, three members of the Eagles? Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, Glenn Fry, Timothy B. Timothy B. Schmidt, Joe Walsh, Don Felder, used to be in the Eagles. Very well. Okay. I couldn't have done that. I thought Henley was the drummer for some reason. He was a drummer. Okay, he was thought, also a drummer in lead six. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's what because I always, I always uh, thought it was weird that he was uh, the drummer and he had he was great. I love, I like Don Henley's music a lot. I bought that uh, used. What's the album? The the greatest hits with the used car salesman. Remember that back in the nineties? Oh, um, shoot, but I don't remember it, the name of it. I know what you're talking about. Oh man, it's great. It's it's a really. You would know, you would know, Adam knows the music, he just doesn't know the names, you know, yeah. until he hears it. Like, oh, I know this song. Yeah. yeah, you would know most of these. Right. And Glenn Fry, man. That, wow. Well, that's it's the soundtrack, I mean, I'm 49 years old, I mean, that's the soundtrack of our youth. <clears throat> right. The Eagles first, and then Glenn Fry's music. Right. And then Don Henley's music, I mean, that was what we listened to. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And then the... Uh, so if you're <laughs> listening, Don Henley... He still loves you. I still love you, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on the bullhucker, Don Henley, and tell us about the time you were in an ice cream store. And it's like, I'm just sitting there getting my damn chunky monkey. This strange son of a bitch comes up to me and tells me some weird motorcycle story. And then tells me he loves me. <laughs> All right. Uh, you ever touched a chem light? <laughs> you ever touched a chem light before? I'll, I'll scream rape you, bastard. Get away from me. It's different than a flashlight. <laughs> Completely different. <laughs> All right, we're going to think about this. We're going to come back. We're going to wrap it up here pretty quick. Uh, this episode of the Bullock. This has been. This one's been fun, Andy. I'll give you that. You. Uh, yeah, those are great stories. Those are great stories. That's. Uh, that was good. So, uh, before we get, uh, before we uh, wrap it up, I will say, check us out on the com. You can. That's our website. Uh, from there, you can get the YouTube channel or uh, watch it or listen to it. They have the uh, Podbean player on there, and you can find us on any. One of the uh, podcast uh, platforms, iTunes, Amazon, Podbean, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever. Check us out on that. Uh, and please leave a message or leave a, uh, leave a comment and uh, subscribe. If you go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to that. Hit the little bell button so you uh, are aware when we release new videos every Wednesday. Um, anything else, Adam? <laughs> I didn't bring up MySpace. <laughs> I just had we don't throw women hit me. That's why I laugh at it. 
We don't throw women. <laughs> we don't throw women. <laughs> no bueno. Is there anything else you want to push before? Uh, comedy is slowing down because of COVID, so there's nothing really to push right now. No, there's nothing to is push. Is there anything going on in your life you want to? Uh, yeah, I, no. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great answer. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for uh, checking us out. We'll be back next week with Andy Johnson. I'm Moose Lundstrom. I'm Adam Burke. See you next week. Peace.